a new whisper. Two years ago, in a little town called Marigana, I had a conversation with my father. I remember my dad sitting me down and looking me straight in the eye and asking me all sorts of questions. Questions like, son, what are your intentions with life? What is it that you're going to do with this thing that you were studying? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I remember looking at him and with absolute faith saying, Dad, I want to be a diplomat. I want to be the president of South Africa in another country. I remember going through all the protocol, the convoys, the glamorous lights, the handshakes. And I remember quieting down and seeing this old man of mine not smiling. I remember him saying to me, son, you have always managed to dream beyond your reality. And sometimes I wonder if you can afford your dreams. Hi, my name is Ezra Mokope, the last child of Isaac and Messina Mokope. Messina Mokope, a young woman born in Marigana raised by Opa Jeremiah and Anna Serrero. A woman that had a dream to just be a teacher and to touch lives. Isaac Mokhobe, a young man born in Ekenuk, Bushpakrich, Mpumalanga. A man that had a dream transforming lives and just preaching the gospel. Now with that, I want to share some questions that I have. Why is it that my dreaming somehow doesn't make me African enough? For some odd reason, my dreaming interrupts the system. If I'm not dreaming small enough, I'm dreaming bigger than I am. And with those questions, I would like to speak to each and every young person under the influence of my voice. And say never, and I mean never, let doubts get in the way of your dreams. Better yet, never let your dreams negate your Africanness. Welcome to the Whisper. Temba la mi logo trina. Temba la mi logo trina. Fana now, and give him Belenan. Give in Jelango and Jen and Yaksis Wanguban. Yak Memezabani, Musabeleban. Yakuzi Puka Puka, Gisiki, Kuzuban. Sanki Kuches, a Gonkanaku, Pukwin. In Kunzi Munyamanin, Paiva, Lutuku, Fuka, Pukwin. Siza Unki Kabel and Gibon. Siza ungi kabele na kungi msulu anguni la isi kukwe Temba la milogu tina, temba la milogu tina Sangi ifule onge iminyango, siza kuna lona ogu tina Kusoba na sa unge tule mina Kusoba na sa use tule tina Izi vandes buswa ingu ngoto aneke pakitala angachala Ngibambe utonga, ngiti mzofuna nge nsukuza chwala Ngikasa ngamatolo, ngibambelela kutoko yesi duaba intuala 
Ingazu kuba matuze ngisaso kujana Tsemba la milo kutina, tsemba la milo kutina Ama puta akona ngea wabona Kepa na mingi kumutu kwa kona Sipunda ngao ama puta si ea pambi nisiza wibona Nangi vijelo nguwe mzo ibona ranjanu kuba ipenge empuma ukanye echona Shazi angea kuibona kwa ibona Shazi ngeo shazi nkina tele siso na sisi hibe sisi sibe siko mbile the township is a terrain of sexual lust, liquor and violence. In silence, mothers move desperately to hinder their husbands and sons. See, these sons have their own little ones fathered by men who have been told they are fathers, our fathers. Decaying souls drowning in drinks with empty stomachs. See this stomach. This stomach never knew of a stable diet till these eyes read till they could see through books. See books. Books are the vantage point for my people to escape this constant state of hunger. For hunger is the curse for the abled man who wakes up and chooses to do nothing. And nothing will become of him who feeds his ego in a woman's temple just as much as nothing. Nothing will become of her who invests in her nails instead of in her brains. The township's children smell like fire. We heard that their fathers fumble our mothers' faces when they come back from night school. Night school where liquor is the lesson for the already limited. The already considered primitive bathe in the misery of their own targeted black bodies. See, nobody speaks of books around here. Instead, men marvel at the idea of their male privilege. Around tables, they twist their tongues, taking turns to tell tales of how they dominate their wives at home. See, we are grown in homes where our parents' navigation of each other is supposed to be a pedagogy to us, their children. But where I come from, the town ship is still sinking. When we realize that the township is sinking, the ground will have swallowed us whole, our names will be washed away from every shoreline by the wave of our own existence. We will not be remembered here. They will not sing songs about us. Those who are to come after will not find us in the Bibles that we tried to find ourselves. And we will shout and scream to the Almighty until the air that fills our lungs is rid of all the polluted suffering that we have inhaled and will cry all our tears hoping that its salt will cleanse the wounds that we that we have carried like a newborn silent because we are pregnant with emptiness and we will try to run we will try to run but our feet will not be able to carry the melanin that is our skin because we are a broken record of struggle an unfinished song us obituaries for birth certificate things caskets for graduation gown things hands held up in the air we are suspect things nameless things and we will try to swim but don't because black boys don't swim black boys cannot survive sea because sea is slave ship and slave ship is black boys freedom Someday we will curse our mother's womb for giving birth to black things. But by the time we realize that the township has sunken, we would have forgotten that we were once kings and queens. Those without thrones, with crowns made out of thorns, crucified. We have a birthmark the size of Africa on our chest. We built the entire whole world with our bare hands. Our existence is, is inexhaustible and our beauty is infinite. Growing up, the very first memory I have is of watching my parents walk away from me, leaving me behind with my grandmother in the township. Next, my parents and I moved to a townhouse in the suburbs. And there I remember never really feeling as though I owned the space around me as though I needed a reason to be where I was. From 
there, my mother and I moved to my grandfather's house in the townships again. <laughs> and there I remember never being able to identify with the other children that played around in the streets because of my English proficiency. And this seems to be a, a prevalent trend amongst a lot of born free in South Africa today. This existential crisis in a sense, if you will. This falling between two chairs. For the longest time, it has seemed as though our dreams and aspirations don't have the strength to carry and haul our Africanness with it. As though there is something antithetical about the two. But as Paul Gilroy writes in the Black Atlantic, identities morph and change through time. They are not static and crystallized in history. We may find them and locate them within ourselves. They change. And the same can be seen with the Kosa tradition of men coming from the mountain, where at first they would wear thick brown tweed jackets in the performance of their manhood. These days they can be seen wearing cotton, linen, and, and bright yellows, blues, and greens. Clearly, Africanness is progressing, it's engaging with modernism. And so, what conversation are we leaving you with today? What part of yourself, of your identity, feels as though it cannot relate to the dreams and aspirations that you have? My dreams are enough. They are African enough. My identity is African enough. We are enough. It's a call to the motherland of free. Thank you.